Welcome to the special webinar on decoding brand safety and sustainability brought to you by Exchange for Media Group in collaboration with BBC World News and BBC.com. In this webinar today, we'll have experts uh, delve into how advertisers choose a brand safe environment for their ad spends. Uh, I just want to put a little bit of context that off late the conversation around brand safety across news channels has become a big conversation and we have seen a lot of brands taking proactive steps to kind of control uh, the narrative or to bring bring in a certain kind of balance in the narrative so uh, we will talk about these issues uh, before we go ahead i will use our uh, esteemed speakers uh, we have uh, mr vivek b sri watsa head marketing for passenger vehicle business unit tata motors limited we have Ms. Rubina Singh, uh, CEO I Prospect, uh, Mr. Vishal Bhatnagar, Sales Director, South Asia, BBC Global News, Mr. Jayan Mehta, Senior General Manager, uh, Planning and Marketing Amul. Uh, welcome all of you to this discussion, uh, and it's great having you with us today. I want to uh, direct my first question to uh, Mr. Srivatsa. I want to start with you and come to everybody else. Uh, as I mentioned that, uh, you know, brand safety has become uh, a new conversation point across brands. And we saw some proactivism uh, recently where, where brands wanted to step in and control it. Tell me how big is the issue of brand safety and uh, sustainability uh, in today's uh, news media environment? Yeah. Uh, so with regard to brand, brand safety, it's really, uh, you know, a very uh, sensitive world out there uh, today. You never, you don't know uh, what wrong messaging or what wrong phrase uh, can really get misinterpreted. And uh, we are putting in place a series of actions. Uh, in, in, and I would say converting it into a process where we don't, uh, you know, uh, put ourselves in a situation which is, uh, you know, I would say susceptible to misinterpretation and also, uh, you know, uh, uh, cause some kind of sensitivity among the different groups out there. Uh, that's how I will start off. Obviously, yeah. there are different aspects to it, you know, what we say, what we stand for, how we say it, all that matters. And we're looking at a comprehensive process around it. Uh, but fundamentally, the approach that Tata Motors have taken uh, and uh, in terms of our communication to our customers is that we are in the business of manufacturing cars and uh, we try to, and we know what exactly our customers want, what are the services that we provide to our customers. And we try to keep a narrative around that, you know, very business centric. Uh, obviously it doesn't mean boring communication, uh, but uh, most of our decisions are centered around uh, business. That's how right. I would uh, like to begin with. Right. Uh, Miss Singh, you have, uh, I mean, you deal with uh, this conversation in and out on an everyday basis, I'm sure. Uh, tell me, what is your uh, understanding of how big is this issue become for brands and for agencies? Um, how are they looking at this conversation now? Is that a question for me? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. It was for you. Yes. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, I think uh, brand safety is not a new challenge, you know, and it's still, it's been there for some time and yet it remains top of mind for brands and it continues to, uh, if I may say, even earn global attention, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And the COVID-19 pandemic has established, um, you know, uh, the new normal to be a digital first lifestyle for majority of the global population. And, you know, consumption habits have changed, more news, gaming, content <laughs> seen more on digital and where customers go advertising follows there you know and at the same time the ecosystem has become far more complex on digital you know you on one side you have fake news and technologies that create deep fake videos with uh, growing more sophistication that threaten the uh, to future erode the institutional trust you know uh, also what has happened is that uh, as people are staying more and more uh, more home the viewing habits are changing People have moved to connected TVs. Uh, you know, while this could lead to more opportunities to talk to the right person based on the uh, location, interest, context, right in the right context with relevant content. However, uh, you know, the measurement is fragmented in the connected TV space across devices and publishers. 
and a result of it what can happen is that ads can appear uh, to support content that doesn't necessarily align with the brand values and fraud can happen even without betting you know the third thing that we've seen the trend we've seen is that gaming presents a huge opportunity of audience for brands but brands must navigate this whole landscape of platform titles player personalities and publisher relationships and it's really complex you know esports is growing hugely in popularity right but brands have to evaluate the risks which are involved especially when it comes to violence language etc you know and uh, what we see is as a result of these trends brands experience several brand safety issues today and industry stakeholders have called for transparency and accountability from uh, tech partners and ad partners and uh, new standards for brand safety are critical i believe for uh, protecting brands from association uh, with unsafe illegal or inappropriate content right right mr mehta uh, amul is of course one of the biggest advertisers across news channels and recently uh, when uh, there was a certain kind of debate going around uh, uh, we saw you know brand some brands come into focus uh, okay so my question simply is that uh, ha- has the conversation on brand safety become more uh, vocal than ever yeah, very true i think you raised a very important subject for discussion today and i agree with what rubina ji and vivek had said that this is a very very old issue uh which is coming up and this is the headline of the times in london uh, in 2017 which uh, talks about the role of brands and role of advertising and the media and digital and all that stuff and how it goes around uh, try to complicate the things uh, as uh, the time progresses and this last few months have been equally equally uh, critical mm. now i agree with what vivek said that as brands we hold in trust uh, uh, the of our customers but in case of amul a 75 year old brand is owned by 3.6 million farmers so it is not just the owners are uh, i mean uh, capitalist or uh, uh, equity market uh, people but it is farmers who are owners of this brand and the consumers are billions who trust the brand blindly i mean that's the faith of blind faith we have developed into the brand into the products uh, so that uh, there is no tension anywhere when you are consuming any amul product so with right. this kind of a cooperative model and a farmer owned brand it's a very very challenging situation for us also uh you mentioned about our media presence yes we have been among the top 5 advertisers in this year uh, uh, across the news channels as well as the general entertainment channels the challenge here is uh, the numbers i mean we advertise about 190 or tv creatives in about 275 to 300 tv channels and total second age i mean i was just calculating for this meeting is about 16 to 20 lakhs spots we have done in the last 8 now this is where when you are advertising and our agencies do the media planning uh, much ahead in time so we don't know that if uh, such thousands of spots which come every day which channel with which news that spot is going to be aired so to expect the brand or the media agency or the advertising agency to actually calibrate what you are doing i mean when we sponsor a master chef we know that this is the one hour show in which our uh, ad will appear and this this how we'll do the planning but when you do long term deals with all the news are most of the news channels then it becomes very critical uh, for that environment uh, to be very clear or measure uh, what is happening and how but once you have the ear on the ground you listen to the customers uh, you have powerful social media presence also to counter uh, then i think uh, we can navigate through uh, tough times also the same problem as uh, rubina ji mentioned is in digital space also so tv digital uh all we we'll have to as brands be very very careful in uh, understanding uh, the context and uh, obviously the communication is very clear because we are also content creators the amul topical the amul girl has been talking about issues uh, for the last 55 years so one of the longest running yes absolutely not that we don't have a voice we also are a part of the conversation and uh, that's why the whole situation uh, is very interesting great uh, mr batnagar you are on the other side of this conversation in a way from an observation point of view uh, what have you been listening about it what have you observed uh, as a platform uh, as somebody who belongs to the platform side how do you see this conversation and what have been you been listening to i think uh, you know just to echo uh, you know what the other panelists have said 
obviously i think the sensitivity around gun safety is has uh, obviously come to the fore in the last few years and i think that's also sort of coincided with uh, you know the immediacy of social media uh, as advivek has said that you never know you know what context what random sort of misstep will get blown out of proportion so we obviously have seen a lot more sort of questions a lot more requirements brands and a lot of lot of questions about uh, you know what we are doing to mitigate any risks uh, around that and uh, for us fundamentally i think it's uh, you know it's a question of trust for us i mean you know just because uh, you know the environment that we create fundamentally you know news itself is a product that's built on trust our viewers have been coming to us for about 100 odd years it's because they expect accurate credible you know, independent news and for us brand safety isn't a veneer it is not a plug in that you can put in your product just to satisfy a few few advertisers i think that has been a philosophy that's built into our core values and that's i think what has sort of driven also our approach so it isn't a one time thing it's not that you know you just sort of put a button on and it stays on i think it's it's a challenge and a struggle and a task every day to make sure that you keep your environment safe to you know retain the trust and i think that trust is what underpins everything that we do on this right uh, mr sri what's uh, the question here is uh, you know it's a little bit complicated you know the, on one side we're talking about uh, credibility and a narrative that is balanced on the other side we are also obsessed with ratings as a brand and and rightfully so so how do we kind of deal with as a brand how do you balance to how do you look at the rate where the ratings is the only metric of a you know kind of uh, reach uh, reach how do you how can brands if uh, this kind of an uh, i hope you can hear me mr srivatsa sorry sorry i was on mute uh, so no, there are a couple of adages which uh, hold true across the ages you know all of us know bad news sells and sensational news sells even uh, more and i think uh, we can't blame anybody for that and that's a fact of life uh, from us uh, you know as advertisers and maybe uh, specifically for tata motors we taken an ultra safe mode towards it uh, if you want to talk about something uh, uh, we double check it obviously treat every every news as fake till you show that uh, you know you it is uh, right uh, also like i said earlier uh, our uh, communication guidelines are extremely clear we speak about uh, you know what uh, services and products we offer our customers uh, of course we it's not that we don't take stands at all but uh, the stand is very clear in terms of uh, uh, drawing a mid path Uh, not uh, not ruffling up feathers is the direction that we go but you are right uh, you know uh, beyond a point ratings matter and that's where i come back to the earlier point is if you uh, if you are looking purely at business um, deliveries um, a number based approach and uh, an roi based approach uh, rather than any other uh, guideline uh, you would always be uh, you know able to defend yourself on your decisions you will always be able to uh, attribute a logical reasoning to your decisions rather than being portrayed as siding uh, with some uh, some side uh, siding with some opinion or even uh, uh, taking emotional decisions you know these are things which we need to be careful about uh, but again as my panelists said uh, you in today's situation you don't know from where the next issue is going to come out you know we recently had a meeting uh with all the cmos of the tata group many of them on how do we tackle this and uh, the consensus was to be first driven by business second is treat every news as fake till you prove till you show that it is uh, right and always build in a process which double validates what you're going to talk about before it goes out there right so that's right. approach that, is a pretty conservative approach but it works yeah a very rigorous one i had i guess yeah. Uh, yeah. uh to you missing uh, uh how do you ensure brand safety in this market environment obsessed with ratings uh, how do you look at this uh, kind of a conflict that is there you know so 
my belief is that advertisers especially when it comes to news you know it's true when it's uh, general entertainment uh, ratings are very very important but uh, you know when it comes to news advertising aren't just chasing ratings when they invest in news channels you know while ratings is still important part of the decision making uh, advertisers are also looking for a value addition and credibility when they look at associating with news platforms and programs especially when they associate with news so you know brands definitely in today's environment want to be careful about the platforms they choose uh, this is where credibility fairness and trust of the viewers comes in and it especially matters where somebody's life dignity or religious sentiment is important you know broadcasters i believe as well as advertisers a responsibility must be fixed and even viewers in a country do not appreciate um, intimidation or harassment of people really that's that's what i think um at denso you know we have our own measurement tech in place you know we just don't follow the numbers presented to us during the pitches uh, blindly and uh, what i believe is that for long term deals and relationships with advertisers balanced news is definitely the way forward you know and on tv we've seen a nudge from advertisers may force news channels into course correction and stop aggressive and toxic content uh, in the name of news but on the other hand on digital i think too much brand safety is also concerned um, as brands you know they work to preserve their equity they should be aware that becoming too cautious may decrease the impact and overall performance also so the problem exists on the other side as well and which we saw in the you know current pandemic that many advertisers uh, wanted to be avoid uh, they just wanted to avoid any kind of association with related content whether it was positive or whether it was negative um, right. which we believe in some cases uh, if it was handled uh, with the right uh, approach Uh, was a missed opportunity right right mr metha uh, uh, when you look at numbers is so tempting you know the numbers game is so tempting for brands and they would always follow it but uh, what are the filters that you follow i mean to ensure that is at the same time safe as well uh, so talking about television uh, since the numbers of ratings come largely for television uh, mm-hmm. so the entire media buying uh, Uh, decision uh, are taken by our ad agency and the media agency so uh, they have been working with us uh, for the last 30 years the other agencies will last more, more than 50 years so they know exactly what's the value of the uh, in values we stand for as an organization as a brand and they obviously uh, translate that into their media plans uh, when they present to us so it's not just the rates per se the ratings help you i decide the rate for the channel but then how much to invest on a particular channel is the call which the agency has to take and recommend to us uh, that this is why a channel x would come at such a low rate it may have a ultra high ratings also but that's not the right environment for you and so uh, while you may choose to be present there your investments on that may not be as commensurate what the ratings are because the environment or that uh, what the experience they provide to the uh, viewers is not what the brand actually stands for so this is the discretion they use and we are uh, follow it so it's uh, so that uh, check and balance is there in the system so it's not that somebody will uh, invest disproportionately in a channel which shows higher rating but the environment is not right for the brand to be present there so that that's the first part of it the other side of it is the brand also becomes a victim of this digital frauds okay uh, we had a very strong uh, problem of uh, fake brands Uh, fake dot com domains, fake ads coming up on Google, uh, luring people to become a distributor of Amul, to set up an Amul franchisee, uh, take up jobs at Amul, and so on. So in the last few months, we took up very strongly with the, all the domain name registers, uh, even fake bank accounts with Amul names were uh, uh, done. And obviously with Google, uh, when the ads come with on their platform uh, uh, in the search engine ratings, uh, if uh, Amul fake Amul website Amul distributor dot com comes up. then uh, it is a huge problem for us because the trust of all the channel partners also gets eroded into that so we filed a case against all these people at the delhi high court and we got a favorable ruling that no dot com in uh, domain registrar could register a name with amul prefix or suffix uh, so that um, uh, it misleads the people and the banks also got a directive not to open fake bank accounts with amul name and so on so these are things we proactively do to protect the trust of our uh, channel partners also consumers also and uh, viewers also uh, and uh, obviously uh, the channel the, our agency is quite strong 
so if we see a discrete i mean things not happening in a particular way or the content gets toxic in some of the channels and there is unnecessary aggression there uh, we talk to them uh, and uh, if they uh, mend their ways it's fine otherwise we walk away so both both the things are there but end of the day as a brand custodian uh, it's more our responsibility to see where our uh, monies are invested uh, and what exposure we get obviously uh, the ratings are important but not that important particularly when it comes to buying news channels right uh, i'll come to you mr batnagar i have a separate question for you i'll just want to go to mr srivatsa again that uh, uh, in this debate of uh, ratings credibility uh, polarized narratives when will credibility dominate the mindset of a brand of a marketer do you think that time is coming closer So it's also uh, how the consumers change. You know, I think um, it's a cycle. Uh, today, consumers are seen to be a little, I would use the word, uh, um, gullible, uh, because with the way fake news operates, uh, there's a big market for it, obviously. Uh, but it's a matter of time before customers themselves uh, get far more sensitive. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, it, it's also a, a little bit of a balance, as Ms. Singh said, we ourselves as brands also have to start pushing the envelope a little bit in terms of what we communicate i'll give an example of uh, tata motors at the you know early part of the pandemic um, you know we were you know we needed to be in touch with our customers but we didn't know what to say but then we moved completely away from you know talking about cars and other stuff and we just propagated positives and messages propagated safety messages uh, which actually uh, gel well with customers you know, so it's it's a balance on what kind of uh, content you want to put out how much you want to push the envelope uh, but at the same time i think the big role that brands need to play and communicators and marketers need to play is to start drying up this quest for uh, tox toxicity this kind of negative communication fake news it's all it's all interwoven if you see a fake news creates toxicity creates a market and then there's more supply you know if there is no demand there there'll not be there'll not be supply anymore that's the reality of capitalism so we we'll have to kind of uh, you know dry out uh, this uh, you know cycle and that is where i think as marketers who have so much of power to influence the customer's mindset have a bigger role to play uh, and uh, like i said that positive communication which we sent out for the first two months no mention of cars no mention of our services but uh, customers uh, stuck to us they they waited for 2 3 months and uh, i'm happy to say that right from unlock uh, every month our market share has grown so somewhere positivity helps and we as marketers need to push that strongly right uh, missing how far do you agree that uh, ad spends on news uh, platforms you know they need a new perspective a new approach altogether where credibility rates higher than other metrics no uh, you know so i i agree with that completely you know and you know really let's think about it outside of content which is focused on you know, obviously areas on uh, violence terrorism polarized views or disinformation um there are only uh, there may be only minimal risks associated uh, with advertising in today's news environment you know and most all uh, marketers agree uh, but some sensitivities will always exist in news right uh, so marketers i believe should reconsider blanket blocking news and utilize you know in fact their available uh, brand safety experts to help them determine their appetite for the scale they want to have on news um, and the way to look at it is that credible media outlets are inherently safer for brands uh, you know news publishers uh, with journalists plug into their local communities who fact check and use technology to manage quality and safety offer brands a safe highly viewable low ad fraud advertising environment is what we believe um and if you know you're using an avoidance strategy of certain uh, keywords that you're blacklisting or, or blocking uh, consider how it's being used you know take into account the keywords or the categories that are being excluded and how much it may influence your campaign and disadvantage high quality legitimate uh, publishers you know i think here is when you have to look at the semantics rather than just looking at uh, uh, you know just one view of 
blockage and mm-hmm. you know if still hard news is a worry there is always a viable alternative right using uh, news may be fine with light level of support from hard news but you know you also have to evaluate there are large void audiences drawn on news platforms uh, which like to consume entertainment food sport you know you can reach out to them so i would definitely urge all marketers that now is definitely the time to reconsider if the if you know if you're avoiding advertising on news uh, there is a lot riding on it there are lots of eyeballs there's a huge opportunity mr matha your quick thoughts on this no i i i fully fully agree with uh, uh, what uh, rubina ji said because uh, you you can't avoid a particular medium so you have to find a way to adapt to it okay uh, having said that we don't do gd at, at all because we know we don't know where the spots are going to come so you can't you spray it all over the place okay uh, but here if we get into the role of creating content then you can uh, you can be present on a particular medium also and actually um, uh, get you higher value for your uh, money spent i mean during lockdown for the last eight months we've been running uh, what's perhaps the world's largest social media uh, facebook live event for recipes the chefs mm-hmm. i mean more than 3000 chefs come on uh, amul facebook page and uh, for the last uh, 250 days they have been sharing eight to 10 live recipes every day and we get 7 to 8 million people and that's all targeted uh, audience coming on our shows and watching it and uh, our we have to just 2 million followers on facebook but still we have reached about 120 crore facebook uh, 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 viewers in the last 8 uh, months and uh, 8 to 10 crore unique people also so uh, at practically no cost so still you are there on social media you are able to amplify the message you we are able to communicate to it and uh, still able to get the job done and news you couldn't avoid in the last eight months because uh, gcs were not doing fresh content so that's what the earlier part i mentioned is uh, certain uh, close monitoring of the sensitive things and listening on social media also helps us understand what people are saying which is good or bad i won't say that uh, all those who are trollers uh, i mean we, i won't call the people on social media trollers for a simple reason that they are your customers and you are when if you are on mass media you better listen to them otherwise you could have just done a print ad and forgotten about it but in digital space you have to communicate and listen to them also uh, so it, at times what happens is the brands uh, uh, are trolled for a certain reason or a communication on a certain channel or i mean it can be or related to content or it will be presence on a particular channel so both these things are actually uh, considered toxic at times by a section of the society Right. but what happens is when it comes to a national issue or a common issue uh, they stand with the brand also uh, like uh, amul was blocked on uh, twitter because we had a topical exit the dragon which was uh, related to china so there the entire social media uh, came together and rallied for the brand so it so why that fellow would have uh, trolled us for some reason but he was when it came to the national issue and standing with the country uh, he was on our side so he or she has it so that way um, people on the other side uh, of the screen uh, whose messages you read are actually real uh, and we if we also as a brand owe our uh, existence to them and if we listen to them carefully uh, we will get solutions you also have to present your point of view also so right. at times if you go wrong so if that also helps in solving the issue uh, in a more easy and amicable way as i Right, Mr. Bhatlangar, you have been listening to all the conversation very keenly. My question to you is that uh, what is the BBC's approach to approving advertising? What are the processes that you follow to ensure brand safety and maximum value for your uh, advertisers? I was on mute. Well, for the B- for BBC, I think any content that goes on our platform that of audience views. passes yeah. through the same filters to so beat editorial content the same checks and balances that go into you know ch- checking any editorial content that goes on for a viewers advertising passes through the th- same filters as well because at this you know uh, any information that we are putting out whether it is an advertising me- message or editorial i think impacts viewer in some way and we need to ensure that there is nothing false or exaggerated or any ca- Claims which are unsubstantiated that go in there. So, so that's one. And the other is that, uh, you know, uh, right from you know human intervention at the highest level. So, just just like the editors, humans who sit there and analyze every bit of content that goes on. Similarly, we've got 
position in the uh, in at the bbc called the advertising standards guardian so th th this is actually you know banned by a few people who would sit there and analyze uh, you know every piece of advertising that goes on one both from, from a viewer impact but at the same time they will flag up any uh, potential risk that the brand might have because of that it might be a context that might have just sort of missed any of the filters that the advertiser or the agency has or we as uh, you know as a commercial team would have missed out they will flag it up and i think that is where also bbc's commitment comes into play because at times this does involve a certain financial cost for us because we are foregoing monetization of certain inventory uh -huh. because we will not carry anything which we feel might have any sort of you know an adverse impact on the brand's reputation because of you know what, what they choosing to do so that's one right. and the other obviously the ongoing thing essentially is that which i think is hygiene for the course that you know because we've got such a massive digital presence as well so we do work with a slew of partners across uh, you know ranging from you know industry bodies like iab or other technology partners like uh, integral ad sciences to make sure that every single impression that goes on is a genuine impression it is vetted this complete transparency of inventory ensure it is human traffic so you know so basically and that's an ongoing process because you know like you know rubina was saying there are there are new challenges every day there are new new ingenious you know uh, uh, method that fraudsters would find to sort of you know uh, scam people so we need to be alert and that, that's a process that go, goes on uh, continuously but i think right. above all uh, you know the, the, the editorial environment we, that we provide uh, gives a you know, gives the safest possible environment for for advertisers i think right uh mr stewart sir tell me uh, there was a time when uh, brands thought that you know we don't have to look into we just have we are platform uh, we don't have to look at the platform we are the narrative agnostic in terms of whatever the channel brand, you know types and uh, now a certain kind of from brands since we have waited for too long was correct and it hasn't happened on its own do you think brands have become a little more activist in terms of controlling the narrative am i audible I, yeah i lost you a little bit in between can you repeat okay, okay. Uh, the question yeah. uh have brands become uh, more activist uh, in their outlook when it comes to controlling the narrative on news uh i wouldn't say so actually uh, i wouldn't uh, really say because for for the longest times each brand has stood strongly for some uh, some narrative or some uh, lifestyle i would say to generalize it very broadly um, it is when it is wrongly interpreted uh, wrongly interpreted or also uh, i would say uh, if it is expressed in a manner that is not easily understood and the nuance of uh, communications are lost that's when things take a sort turn i would say uh, i i don't i won't uh, say that brands off later become much more uh, you know expressive about about their opinions or taking sides on whatever spectrum there is i wouldn't say that uh, it's about uh, probably uh, digital provides a lot more freedom in communication uh, also digital has a lot more uncensored content even from the brand i use the word censor but probably unmonitored is a better word uh, content right. from brands that go out which was not the case earlier so uh, right. you have uh, the urgency to kind of respond to uh, customers uh, uh, you know on digital in, in twitter if you don't respond within 2 minutes you're seen as a unresponsive brand so there are cases where uh, some you know content goes out which is not exactly ratified by people closer to the heart of the brand and that's why you see a lot more instances of uh, misinterpretation a lot more instances of i would say uh, a lack of clarity in content right right uh missing if you can hear me uh uh okay am i audible yes yeah okay uh what would be your your kind of recommendation to marketers as far as, as uh, safety practices are concerned when it comes to advertising on news channels so see 
I'm going to say something that there's always going to be a certain amount of risk, particularly related to user-generated content, you know, on digital. In turn, you know, we will uh, continue to refine mitigation tools and strategy. Disinformation will continue to thrive by finding newer and newer avenues. And I think privacy uh, debates will not be concluded. And as a matter of fact, uh, with the advent of AI, you know, there'll be debates on uh, whether it's ethical and how will we regulate it and it'll only get further ignited. So fraud, viewability and context will have to be addressed. And especially in the context which I alluded to earlier, uh, you know, in mediums such as digital out of home, audio, connected TV and gaming. Having said that, you know, uh, the fundamentals we follow on viewability, uh, safety and ad fraud uh, at Bensu uh, not only provide uh, a foundation for brand safety, uh, but also higher quality impressions. So, you know, our high viewability standards that are, you know, 100% pixels must be visible for at least one second, uh, you know, it underpins our quality uh, first approach to ensure that our clients and partners understand that we will make advertising work better for them. You know, also to avoid ad fraud, we use uh, an MRC accredited ad verification partner uh, to be able to detect sophisticated invalid traffic. For direct buyers, you know, we set up alerts and we monitor any fraudulent activity uh, that may come under suspicion. And in case of programmatic buyers also, we use pre uh filters, post vid blocking, wherever it's uh, offered to employ impression level data analysis to optimize, um, you, you know, instances of uh, fraudulent activity. Uh, and to ensure safety, you know, uh, like I said earlier, we customize uh, blacklist, whitelist, negative uh, words based on uh, semantics. Uh, you know, we utilize these active, uh, active blocking sets uh, and instant alerts. And with the large world gardens, if I can say, uh, you know, um, we, are, uh, uh, we use the platform filters as much as we can. But at the same point in time, you know, we are aware of the brand safety limitations uh, that exist by the platform. Uh, but at the same point in time, you know, uh, the promise and the appeal of new technologies to help us address this inappropriate adjacencies, fraud or transparencies, I think remains really, really strong. Uh, while artificial intelligence has, you know, made models that are successful in identifying IP infringing content or spam or uh, online disinformation, uh, the biggest one which remains to be solved is uh, hate speech. You know, because human contempt has many nuances that have eluded technology up to now, and detection relies heavily on uh, human review. Uh, but you know, with the progress that we are ha uh, having. My hope is that uh, we will solve for this as an industry very, very quickly. Um, right. Also, the other challenge is big on the video space. And even today, the computer vision that we see images and process video uh, exists only with bespoke video players or large social platforms. And even if that exists with them, you know, they cannot get processed the amount of content that they get at the scale and speed that is required. But uh, to conclude on a more positive note, I think uh, I was reading there is a earlier evidence of blockchain that can actually help deliver better transparency and ad placement and distribution of ad spending. And there are some test runs that I think are already happening in the UK and the US. So I just want to say that the risks and technology may involve, but the underlying truths will always be valid um, that we need uh, an independent measurement uh, system in the industry, which is absolutely critical. Um, and that framework is crucial. Uh, and education and literacy programs are also very, very important on the other side uh, with partners to make them aware of uh, what the possible outcomes could be. Right, right. Absolutely, absolutely. Some wonderful points raised. Uh, Mr. Mehta, coming to you with the same question, uh, Amul, is the biggest spender, of course. Uh, is the brand very activist in its outlook now that it wants to also look at the narratives and not just be concerned about platforms and agnostic to the narratives? No, as I mentioned earlier, we have been in space of talking about issues through the Amul Girl for the last 55 years. 
so but uh, it's even more critical now because uh, earlier topicals were one in a month uh, then it became once in a week now it's almost two to three every week so but the editorial control is not with the, us it is with the ad agency so what mr dakuna decides comes and when you see it i will also see it so so that that is the discretion uh, and the editorial rights the agency has got to talk about anything and everything under the sun around the world on anyone uh, be it the highest office in india or highest office in us they will they have the right and liberty to do so and people have accepted it because we are not doing it with any uh, ill intentions it's never critic it may be it may it will only reflect what is the voice uh, what is the feeling of the uh, uh, countrymen and the masses so that way we've been active in this space so it's not that we have been passive and we just observe things uh, and try to be very very safe we are also on the edge as far as talking about issues which are relevant to all of us uh, so having said that uh, what uh, rubina ji mentioned in digital space uh, obviously there are a lot of checks filters balances available there but when it comes to news channel and news television advertising and when your buys are rodp which is which means it's not fixed time spent in 9 pm news mein durdarshan mein karte hain वैसा इट्स नॉट गोइंग टू हैपन इन दिस एरा इन दैट केस वी हैव टू टेक अ कॉल एंड हार्ड कॉल एट टाइम्स दैट वेदर दिस इज द क्वालिटी यू वांट टू बी और एसोसिएट योर ब्रांड और विद और यू वांट टू स्टे अवे फ्रॉम इट हैविंग सेड दैट देयर आर मल्टीपल ऑप्शंस अवेलेबल सो इट्स नॉट जस्ट न्यूज़ ऑन न्यूज़ चैनल्स इट्स न्यूज़ इन न्यूज़ प्रिंट आल्सो इज एज मच इंपॉर्टेंट एंड आफ्टर हैविंग डन एवरीथिंग व्हाट विल यू डू विद योर व्हाट्सएप because customer ke paas to remote hai par sath mein whatsapp bhi hai whatsapp forward uh, are uh, a thing which uh, nobody in the world can control uh, including uh, facebook or whatsapp themselves and uh, while some checks and balances are there that you can't forward more than so and so times and so on but log jo bhejte hain ke itna forward kijiye ke yahan tak pahunche so usko to there is no solution to it so uh, as again i mentioned we have to be uh, having our ear on the ground listen to all the conversations i myself i myself look at every single tweet or insta post on amul uh, and for the last 5 years so it's not wow. just you leave to uh, so uh, the listening tools and then you try to look at positive negative sentiments here i have, if you tweet anything directly or indirectly about my brand also uh, i have my ear and i on it and that message is immediately relayed on fast twitter and having said that there is a customer care channel and all that stuff when you make a phone call and talk to us that's a different call so uh, we have to have uh, uh, um, the brand and the brand team as and the ad agency and the media team also has to be con- continuously listening and uh, don't hesitate about communicating and uh, that our topicals do our creatives do uh, their separate campaigns uh, for digital also uh, we go into the vernacular also so we have social media handles for top 5 7 states of south india east india and so on and so forth where hindi english and then bengali tamil telugu malayalam and so on and so forth so engaging customers is the only way out and uh, as i mentioned uh, we need to have their trust in our products and only if we communicate that's going to happen so we can't shy away from it uh, and uh, better be ready or be prepared to face it right mr batagar you mentioned how uh, bbc puts filters when it comes to choosing the advertisers you know you kind of look at it but in in your interaction with brands have you also found out that brands themselves are very concerned about where do they go? is it sorry absolutely rohel i think uh, you know for brands uh, it it is now uh, you know a concern which is far bigger than just advertising roi i think the uh, you know the implications of any reputational risk is far greater than a marginal change in roi Uh, you know because uh, you know brand and brand, you know brand equity and reputational risks aren't just you know a, a soft issues these these are hard i think pnl or you know uh, they they are balance sheet issues really if you look at it and we've seen how brands across the globe have reacted very strongly to protect their reputation on these counts so yes of course brands brands are con- uh, are concerned about it and uh, and then uh, you know in terms of uh, what they can do i think uh, you know the the uh you know the evaluation process as rubina was saying has become far more sophisticated i think the agency partners and consultants and i think they they are advising brands in terms of you know getting in more evaluation filters which re- reflect that you know the dynamism in the entire decision making process today it isn't just simply you know uh, optimizing reach uh, or, or cost that i think it is also 
be able to acquire the right context uh, for for the brand as well. So I think context context acquisition metrics are also coming into play increasingly because I think right. uh, an advertisement which is placed in an environment which perhaps erodes a brand's image or equity and it goes out to a lot more many people is is is, is negative. I'd rather compromise as a brand or maybe marginally less reach. Something which, in a sense, I think uh, you know, you know, provides some synergy and aligns with my brand values, as as Vivek had said. So you know, so definitely, brands are having those conversations and they are uh, using all of these uh, you know valuations uh, while deciding on where they advertise now. Right. I have uh, ten minutes. There are some audience questions as well. I would love to take them as uh, quickly. Uh, finally, quick comments from uh, all of you, Mr. Srivatsa, for starting with you. What what would be the broad conversation would uh, the narrative around safety in the next six months to year, according to you on news platforms? Can you can you just uh, repeat the question? It was uh, yeah, intermittent. Yeah. Your voice, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, my network is bad. Uh, uh, what would be the broad uh, you know conversation uh, drivers? For brand safety over the next six to one year, six months to one year, in your view, yeah. on news. I think uh, I would look at it slightly broader. You know, I think the nation needs more positivity now, uh, and as we come out of uh, uh, COVID, especially in India, uh, there has to be a little bit of uh, euphoria created. I would say first err on the side of positivity, make people feel better. Uh, in terms of, uh, I would say safety. Maybe further tighten up on the internal processes, ensure uh, that we don't add to the fire that's already burning. And uh, as uh, Mr. Jain Mehta said, um, you know, every single post or tweet or communication uh, in the last four or five months goes through me. You know, it, it's quite a, quite a lot. We send out uh, uh, close to 10, 15 tweets a day and a, a lot of Instagram posts and all that. Everything goes through us. Um, I think as brands, we have to be conscious not to add to the fire and try to spread positivity, euphoria uh, in, in the Indian con customer's mindset so that we move dramatically to a much better space than we are in now. Right. Missing your quick thoughts on this. Um, so I would say that, you know, there are some content types, no matter what, uh, they're going to be sensitive categories and, you know, whether it's um, ad tech industry, they're excluding pages, on those topics, you know, uh, but there are other segments which offer, uh, you know, uh, where, where, you know, just an on the shelf approach for brand safety, uh, safety, uh, uh, but which lack the nuance and the subtlety brands need to maximize their reach at scale uh, uh, should be thought through very carefully. And I think uh, uh, I want to sum it up by saying that advertisers uh, now, you know, need a more new nuanced approach to brand safety, which is uh, more focused on finding places suitable for their ads than avoiding inappropriate content. So I'll leave it at that. Well said. Uh, Mr. Vetha, your thoughts on this? Uh, um, where, where do we see? Because I mean, this conversation, as we all know, has been going around for some time. But where, where does it logically uh, conclude or kind of uh, stop where we make sense of it and implement it? Do you think that time there now? No, no, it's uh, it's not going to end uh, anytime soon. See, if, see, we, like uh, we as brands are aware, uh, we also expect uh, the media partners to be sensitive to uh, where their monies are coming from. What we say, which side of the bread is buttered, and uh, also consumers, uh, I mean, uh, need to be uh, kept aware of not getting carried away by a uh, few people who want to appreciate the environment by spreading their own agenda. So it's, yeah, I mean, uh, we are a democracy, we need a free media and uh, we need uh, media avenues also as brands to advertise. So this is, this is not just a one way street. I mean, if we are a communist country and there is only one channel uh, and um, we think that to solve the problem, you kill it, it's not going to happen that way. So um, we'll have to live with all these things. And uh, the more uh, tools we give to our uh, uh, to everyone, I mean, each one of us is a publisher ourselves. So uh, risk and responsibilities are shared by all of us, and we are 130 crore people, and the influencers are around the world. So right. um, uh, 
not that one channel can do the magic it is not that one brand can only do that take that responsibility it's not that a few customers can say okay, no no we will only do this and nothing else so it's a collective responsibility of the nation and this month and as we call unless the churning happens uh, you will not get the cream on the top so um, we live with it and uh, we learn to live with it uh, and uh, see more important as a brand uh, let's have this conviction that what's our intent okay so when you are evaluating a content if the intent is right then we as a brand because uh, what we know what we are going to put out to the audience and where we are going to put out so if the intent is right uh, then i'm sure if anybody and everybody also challenges it and we have a right point of view and we are able to communicate that uh, i i don't think there is much of a reason uh, to worry about it and there are many many other issues also to fight out together as a country uh, and as brands and as uh, categories in the market and uh, we focus our energies on that and try to uh, make life happy for everyone Mr. Bhatnagar, uh, so uh, Mr. Mehta said about Manthan. So the Manthan is already there, and I think some credible voices are in desperate need. People really want to listen to some credible voices now. They've heard enough of uh, divisive content. Uh, do you think, uh, uh, well, content-wise, BBC? Uh, I mean, how how have it added to your advantage in an Indian market where people uh, that is more, uh, you know, what I. emotional in content how have you navigated it and arrived at a point where brands are now interested uh, so no uh, that manthan that uh, jayanji just mentioned i think that that is very very critical and i think it is good for news and it's good for media to have this i think because uh, news you know if i just talk about you know the relevance of news for advertising it is the most engaged audience that you find on news news is right. an active choice it is a it's a lean in medium unlike those cat videos that your recommendations engine throws up which might give you millions of views but i don't know if they'll ever give you any engagement so i think uh, news will continue to be relevant it will continue to be impactful however uh, i think the challenge from within news is that not all news platforms are equally engaging i think and that that the word that's come up you know uh, multiple times in a conversation today is trust i think uh, you know news environment or platforms that you know that that basically that that have earned the trust of their viewers i think those are the ones that will stay engaged i think it is just like human interaction i think the most enriching engagement or interaction that you have is with people who you trust where you can just let your guard down and i think that's when you really sort of have, have an active exchange of views i think that's equally true true for your for your advertising messages in in news environments as well And, right, uh, right. and I think, uh, from our point of view, your question about how we've navigated this, I think, I think we've just stuck to what what we've believed, and I don't think the fundamental moral compass in terms of what goes on air on our platforms has yeah. really changed at this stage. Mm -hmm. And I think, if anything, uh, it is just proof that there is an immense need for credible, accurate, you know, news out there. We've seen. Our uh, audiences grow to record high globally, and today, in fact, India is the largest contributor. uh uh for you know in terms of traffic across the board for the bbc we have almost 60 million uh, people in india tuning into various bbc platforms so i think accurate quality content sells there is ne never going to be a shortage in terms of demand for that in fact uh, going forward uh, more so i think there will be more currency for for genuine quality news right i have 3 minutes i want to take two questions i want to come to you mr mehta first this question is uh, Uh, the question there's no name is not given uh, is it the responsibility of brands to stand for issues that promote unity and diversity uh, that's the question yeah yeah so as i mentioned uh, the brands have to uh, i mean the, uh, the communication has to address to these issues also i mean we can't be divisive uh, that's for right. sure and uh, when as amul we say we are the taste of india so when india says it's india stands for everyone and uh, right. in in words of uh, our founder chairman uh, dr kurian he used to say that the milk washes the concept of caste creed religion because on the, the day when people come in the queue to produce uh, this give the milk to the village cooperative society uh, you are not um, uh, owning your existing to a particular religion and the cow and buffalo does not have any religion so that way uh, yes unity and diversity is a part of the dna and uh, that's what all of us uh, stand for and with this i'll also take one more question which i hear uh, see here yes. now one mr yeah, yeah. patil about the vegan thing uh, there there are lobbies which which are wanting to promote their products 
and uh, which are basically not milk based products but they are soya beverages or almond beverages or oat beverages calling themselves milk and also denigrating milk now uh, right. milk gives livelihood to 10 crore families in our country okay and it obviously provides nutrition to all of us and india being the largest producer of milk in the world and also the consumer milk in the world there are a lot of multinational lobbies trying to push their agenda into our country by denigrating our uh, milk producers our cattle uh, their rearers and also the product per se so we as amul and the indian dairy industry is acutely aware of this and we are working on strategies to communicate there are government laws which says in a law which was passed as late in 2017 18 which says that any non milk i mean milk is only one which is bovine milk which is from the order of a cow or a buffalo uh, so a soya beverage can't call itself milk uh, oat beverage can't call itself milk so we are working on it and very soon uh, runji you will see a full page ad in leading papers uh, in which we will uh, shatter this myth and uh, clarify the reality of the pure dairy industry vis a vis this uh, 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 lobby which is trying to denigrate the milk lobby right. finally uh, mr sri what's uh, your final uh, comments on brands taking stand you know on issues how do yeah. you see this so it, it really comes from where uh, from the origins of the brand which category they play um, we just heard uh, about amul and how, how they've always stood for the taste of india it's interwoven into the fabric of the country and they can't avoid it but if you look at other categories automotive from where i am talking now um when i i wouldn't use the word responsibility of the brand i would say it's it's more a prerogative of the brand if they think uh they can take up you know uh, uh messaging in this direction it is fine uh, we have, uh, from tata motors we have taken up uh, uh, uh you know driving safety safety on the roads as a messaging a different kind of safety and it has been uh, working well for us both in terms of creating awareness uh, of being driving safe on the road uh, it is uh, you know push the industry forward in terms of creating safer cars so i would say it is a prerogative of each uh, industry each organization to take up the cause that they like and the cause might span multiple uh, you know topics so um, and uh, like i said it starts depends on what your origin is what's your vision uh, is in, uh, in terms of uh, growth in the country right thank you so much we are out of time there were some more questions but hopefully uh, maybe next time or i will try to send them to you but thank you so much for sharing your views has been a discussion and i think uh, the, it's already focused there we have been out it and let's hope over the next 6 months to 1 year we have a different perspective put together thank you thank so you. much for joining us uh, it's been great talking to all of you thank you thank you hey, thanks to hell thank you everyone thank you thank, thank you so much